What? You haven't subscribed yet? You simply must. What are we rocking today? Wow, have a look at this. This is a beautiful PC. It has dual floppy drives, dual CD-ROM, Sega CD emulation card, a nice VLB Trident 1 megabyte graphics card, ISA of course, with VLB. Uh, we then have a uh, Winbond hard drive controller card, which is powered by, or rather powers this Transcend 4 gigabyte disk on module. Also provides the dual CD-ROM and dual floppy drive goodness. We have a SNASM 2 card in there. Just below that awfully crooked sound blaster. CT1350B, sadly not CMSable. And we're rocking 64 megabytes in four 16 meg chips. And let me tell you, this machine is a beast. So I didn't have much luck with the uh, Pentium, but this one, boy, does it work. Did I mention full blown PC speaker, not just a beeper? There we go. So now to fire up the, uh, just make sure the SNASM card is communicating properly with the uh, Mega CD. We will go to the SNASM2 directory appropriately named SNASM2 and SN test. Connected. Cool. And that's about all this machine does at the moment. Pretty sure it has nothing else on it. Yeah, it's pretty blank. And it looks like we might be partitioned to a 2 gig partition. There must be a limitation of whatever on earth I'm running. And it's still 6.22. Anyway, that's all that. So uh, now I can try doing other things now that I finally got a PC that works. So it's very dependent on the uh, main board you use, uh, we've uh, found. And of course I'd rather find this out myself rather than have someone else tell it to me, so that's exactly what I've done. Although uh, respect points go out to uh, Jackhead on Assembler Games, he was uh, quite helpful uh, with this. Uh, he's the one who actually provided this particular board that I'm now using. And maybe some other things. but. Yeah, this is the board to use. Unfortunately, the uh, Pentium 100 with PCI slots didn't didn't do it. My Pentium 3 with PCI slots does it, but there's not enough clearance to fit that giant card at the bottom, which is uh, quite a beautiful card, but far too big. And I did try getting a uh, not a tower, but a flat desktop and. There wasn't enough height. You'll notice here that the actual height of this, this card is about a centimeter, about a centimeter and a half higher than the bracket, which didn't work. So unfortunately I can't use the other case, but I was able to strip some very useful parts out of it, such as screws, like there. Um, as well as some, all the bits that were in it. Uh, the main board had uh, battery corrosion, of course, so, and actually had corroded the BIOS chip, which wasn't very good, so I chucked that, but kept everything else. So we've got a very nice uh, creative sound card out of it. Which brings me to another thing while I'm quickly ranting and raving. Um, apparently, I can't remember if it's the SNASM card or the CD emulation card, may have issues with Sound Blaster cards. Uh, compatibility problems. I remember reading that in some tech document. I haven't actually tested the sound card yet, but it's such an old sound card it shouldn't have any problems. As you can see, it's got the nice volume controls on the back. So that'll be very good for uh, 8 
8-bit gaming, I suppose, since all it outputs is 8-bit sound. Um, I actually was limited by the slots because that one empty one I do have in there has a bit of corrosion in it, of course. And there's not enough clearance to fit a full-blown... Like, uh, that grabber sort of like to have put the uh, ultrasound in here, but there's just not enough room. Unless I want to sacrifice something like the video card or the snasm card, but, you know, that's not going to happen, so... We did have some 8-bit slots up the top, which have come in handy for the 8-bit uh, sound blaster. So, thanks for watching. Uh, we may have some more videos about this in the coming weeks. Uh, I've actually jumped onto eBay ooh, last week, just late last week. And, oh yes, and we're using a beautiful IBM keyboard there. How could I forget that? Just sounds good. Picked up a PlayStation 3 with a yellow light of death and an Xbox 360 with red ring of death. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to bring them back to life. Also picked up three broken SNESs with varying faults, uh, varying from no video, no sound, but power. Uh, no sound, but video, and no power at all. So we'll be playing around with those. Uh, it's a bit outside the sort of Sega domain because they're pretty much completely non-Sega consoles, but I like learning about these sorts of things, getting an idea for their insides, so we'll have a look, see what we can do, um, see if we can repair them. Oh, and this little bit's just for our head crab of assembler games. Uh, this is what you'll get if the Mega Drive dev unit isn't detected or not connected properly and you try and run SN test. Uh, it has to be on, but it will load the test and you will get... Um, uh, what am I type? Thinking a bit too uh, Unix-y at the moment, apparently. So you'll get your good old SCSI link working uh, without unit without the Mega Drive unit connected but with the Mega Drive on you'll be able to actually run SN test and I look forward to seeing some results from that uh, when you do get it up and running so uh, again thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more